everyone, we have come to the 12th week of the semester. Time flies really fast, right? Hopefully everyone is still on the right track and doing well so far, yeah? Today's topic is mainly about political parties in Malaysia and also opposition coalition. You can get a lot of information about Malaysian political parties out there. So if you have confusion and need to clarify on some issues further, the answer is at your fingertips. Let's start our lesson now, yeah? Alright class, let's start our lesson now. Okay, so this week we are going to learn about political parties and election system in Malaysia, which is already in chapter 5, yeah? As usual, before we proceed to the content of the lesson itself, let's take a look at the syllabus content, okay? So 5.1, we are going to look at the introduction. 5.2, history of political parties in Malaysia. 5.3, the election system in Malaysia. And 5.4, the future of Malaysian political culture and landscape. Okay? In brief, there are three main points in chapter 5 which is the history of political parties in Malaysia or mainly everything is about the political parties in Malaysia the election system in Malaysia and then the third main point is the future of Malaysian political culture and landscape Alright class, let's start with the introduction Political parties are part and parcel of democracies As you all know, democracy system is a government where the representative of a certain political parties being selected during the election, yeah? So, um, we can see that political parties is complement, uh, is a complement of democracy, yeah? Political systems do not inherently require the institution of political parties to advance the politics of the political system. However, yeah, guys, still, political parties are seen important in the implementation of the executive and administration of a government. Political parties are formed after political system are put in place. It was only after the establishment of the government first then political parties can be formed. So there are rules here. Yeah? After the government has been established, then the political parties can be formed. Next one, party system in Malaysia. Okay, actually this kind of uh, common types of uh, party system in Malaysia is already being presented by your friends during presentation, yeah, but never mind. If you want to know more about the elaboration of the party system in Malaysia, I mean the common criteria of it, you can ask your friends to provide you the full text yeah, of their assignment. Okay, the political party in Malaysia is based on communal or ethnic base. Compared to Western and developed countries, their political parties are based on pragmatic ideological orientation, although they still maintain the major ideologies in such liberal, democrat, conservative, socialist, and feminist to distinguish among them. Political parties in Malaysia are formed on the basis of race, religion, ideology, social class factors, does that contributed to the high number of political parties existed? So these are all the characteristics of major political parties in Malaysia which has been discussed clearly during your presentation uh, online, yeah? your online presentation. The first one, predominantly ethnic, based derived from particular ethnic group. Second, mostly founded largely on the necessity to protect the interest of particular group. Third, the non-communal or ideological parties seem to have limited group, leadership and basis of support. Fourth, existence of party coalitions for specific reasons. And number five, centered around a dominant party system. So there is only, uh, th so there is usually only a dominant party which is conquering everything at the whole system of the parties, the political situation in Malaysia. As you can see, we are also being conquered by a dominant party system which is Barisan National. Yeah? 
for the la for the past 61 years until now yeah okay so um you can take this keyword predominantly ethnic um there are common interests among the groups non-communal or ideological parties seems to have limited group party coalitions and also a dominant party system all right class so we move on to the next one which is the history of political parties in malaysia okay coalition building among opposition parties in a common political thing in malaysia as party coalition is one of the most attentive history in malaysian politics the history of coalition itself is important to understand the progress of political development in Malaysia. All right, class, for 5.2, the history of political parties in Malaysia, we are going to look at um, two points here. The first one, we are going to look at the coalition of opposition parties itself, okay? the historical chronology of opposition coalition, and then the explanation of each political party in Malaysia yeah, after this yeah. Okay. So um, historical chronology of opposition coalition. This is important, yeah. Okay. Um, Malaysian politics is considered to be an ethnic based politics. Ethnic based politics means that they have ethnic political parties from the beginning. The first coalition politics in Malaysia was formed in 1955 in Malaysian government with practice the principle of the coalition by Lichfart's theory if you still remember yeah, Lichfart's theory of consortial democracy okay. Pakatan Rakyat was the first coalition of opposition parties in Malaysia that managed to deny Barisan National of the two-thirds majority in the 2008 general elections and won the popular vote in the 2013 general elections. Coalition building is, therefore, an important strategy used by the political parties to unite and attract support from the different communities in the country. Okay, class, let's take a look at the first period. A dominant party system by BNR, Barisan National, um, from 1957 to 1998, yeah. So Barisan National or BN has been appointed as the government which has administered Malaysia for more than half a century. It also has representatives from all ethnics in Malaysia. Yeah? United Malays National Organization or AMNO was founded in 1946 by Dato Onjafa to protect the Malay interest. The Malaysian Chinese Association or MCA was formed to protect the Malaysian Chinese interest and the Malaysian Indian Congress, MIC, was established in 1946 to represent the Indian community. So these three are the components of Barisan National. Yeah? The monopoly by BN as a single ruling party since independence was broken when the opposition parties formed a coalition among them in the 1919 Malaysian general election. 1919, yeah? Moreover, the nature of party system in Malaysia almost changed into the two-party system when Pakatan Rakyat uh, in, uh, include PAS, DAP, and Keadilan establish. Okay. So second period, broken monopoly from Barisan Alternative to Pakatan Rakyat. So Barisan Alternative was actually the most earliest, uh, I mean the earliest, yeah? the earliest uh, opposition, opposition party that challenged the Barisan National hegemony. So the impetus for the Barisan Alternatives formation was the 20 September 1998 arrest and subsequent conviction of former AMNO Deputy Prime Minister Anwar Ibrahim, who had been fired from his government post and subsequently became the leader of the reformacy movement against AMNO. The main actors in Barisan Alternative or BA and Pakatan Rakyat PR were almost the same individuals which are DAP and PAS as the members. However, the differences between them are during Barisan Alternative, PKR or Pakatan PKR or Pakatan Rakyat yeah, was involved in the 10 Malaysian general election um, 10 
on the ticket of the National Justice Party, PKN, and Malaysian People's Party, PRM. PKR was formed in 2003 by a merger of the National Justice Party, or Parti Keadilannya, and the Malaysian People's Party, PRM. Uh, therefore, Barisan Alternative had four component parties which were dubbed PAS, Keadilan, and also PRM during its early establishment and was involved in 10 Malaysian general election. Yeah? Barisan Alternative only had two component parties during 11 Malaysian general election, which were PAS and PKR. The key for success in the 1999 general elections was the leaders among them, especially PAS and DAP, understood the fragility of their partnership under the Barisan Alternative banner and agreed to focus on economic equality, social justice and also transparency. Members of both acknowledged the critical role that Anwar plays in holding the alliance together, especially when Barisan National is doing its best to break it apart. Unfortunately, the alliance of Barisan Alternative during 11 Malaysian general election had been strained by PAS when PAS renounced its aim of making Malaysia an Islamic state but did not include this issue in joint manifesto. Okay. Remember, yeah, it's general election 11. Yeah? Not only that, but they also assumed that Lim Kit Siang and Karpal Singh lost their constituencies mostly because of its largely Chinese electorate distrust of the alliance with PAS. The loss of Anwar Ibrahim as the main leader of Barisan Alternative is the most important factor for the breakdown of the Barisan Alternative coalition. Barisan Alternative was disbanded after the 2004 general elections and a new coalition was formed uh, called People's Front or Barisan Rakyat following the 2008 general elections. The name Barisan Rakyat was also converted to Pakatan Rakyat or PR after the 2008 general elections. The first PR or Pakatan Rakyat convention was held in 2009 in Shah Alam and the second was held in Penang in 2010. Pakatan Rakyat had no organization but appointed Shop Brimi Side as Pakatan Rakyat secretary. The coalition was formed among the opposition parties in Malaysia such as uh, PKR, Keadilan, DAP and PAS to break down Barisan National. Yeah? Okay, the third period which is the performance of Pakatan Rakyat in 2008 and 2013 general election. The results of the 2008 general election on March 8, 2008 was unexpected and surprising to everyone and drew some of the first in the history of politics in Malaysia. The changes in behavior and orientation of voting in the 2008 general election is referred by most major media and online communities as a wave of political tsunami. The unexpected result of 2008 general election was due to dissatisfaction among the Malaysian people with the government which led them to choose other parties. The opposition parties took advantage of the situation and started on coalition building by forming Pakatan Rakyat. Dab and PAS appeared to get a new paradigm when Anwar Ibrahim became the Pakatan Rakyat's advisor. Yeah? He had a strong influence because he was the former deputy prime minister, the deputy president of AMNO, Barisan National members of the cabinet, and once previously as the main leader of Angkatan Belia Islam Malaysia, or known as ABIM. Pakatan Rakyat won 82 of the seats in the parliament, or 36.9% of the parliamentary seats. According to the election commission, about 70% of Malaysia's 10.9 million voters casted their ballots. The ruling coalition, Barisan Nasional, won 51.2% of the popular vote against 64% in the 2004 polls which was a reduction in performance while the opposition improved its performance from 9% to 37% yeah it's a lot you know 9% increased to 
person it's such a challenging opposition yeah from Pakatan Rakyat in 2008 I mean in 2004 okay the 13th general election was the election that was seen as intense in the history of elections in Malaysia because of the consolidation of Pakatan Rakyat and rights of a young generation demanding a transition of power that had been dominated by Barisan Nasional. The young people wanted a change of the government under the leadership of the Pakatan Rakyat coalition under the leadership of Anwar Ibrahim. In the 13th general election, the opposition coalition Pakatan Rakyat won more of the total number of votes with a tally of 50 per 50.87% of the popular vote but only 89 parliament seats um, includes 40.09% of the total. In contrast, BN had picked up 478 of the popular vote. BN won 133 federal seats, thus retaining parliamentary control with 59.91% of the seats. Yeah? BN indeed won only 45. 55% of the popular vote and 51.55% of the seats in West Malaysia with Sabah and Sarawak together contributing nearly 30% of the total number of seats won by the end. That is why Sabah and Sarawak are always called the fixed deposit of the end. Yeah? But due to Pakatan Rakyat first past the post electoral system, Barisan Nasional had won 60% of the seats to take the majority in Parliament. In brief, although the main actors Barisan Alternative and Pakatan Rakyat are almost the same, their impacts are very different. Barisan Alternative cannot deny two-third majority, the end like Pakatan Rakyat. Pakatan Rakyat was the coalition of opposition political parties that continued to put pressure on the Barisan Nasional during the Malaysian general elections from 2008 until 2013. Okay, the next period, which is the victory of Pakatan Harapan. So, Pakatan Harapan was established in September 2015 as an opposition political coalition against the then ruling Barisan National Coalition. Its main elite political parties are the Sabah Heritage Party, Party Warisanya, United Progressive Kinabalu Organization, Homeland Fighters Party, and Malaysian United Democratic Alliance. It is also the largest political coalition with 91 seats in the Dewan Rakyat. While at the state level, it is the state government and ruling coalition in three of the 13 states across the nation. They are Penang, Selangor, and also Negeri Sembilan. It also garners the two-thirds majority in the state legislative assemblies of Penang and Selangor to form the stronger state governments. The coalition consists of the Democratic Action Party or DAP, People's Justice Party, Keadilan, National Trust Party, Party Amana, and formerly, formerly Malaysian United Indigenous Party, PPBM, ya, Party Peribumi Bersatu, which left the coalition and its federal administration collapsed in February 2020, triggering the 2020 Malaysian political crisis. Okay, now uh, move on to 5.2.1, Opposition Alliance or Coalition in Challenging BN Political Hegemony. So we're going to look at each of the coalition, yeah? The first one, APU. What is APU? You'll see later. Second, Gagasan Rakyat. The third one, Barisan Alternative or BA. And fourth, Pakatan Rakyat. So, Barisan Alternative and Pakatan Rakyat are the most popular one, yeah? Okay, the first one, Angkatan Perpaduan Ummah or APU. It was an informal political coalition. The political coalition was formed by PAS, Parti Melayu Semangat 46 or 546. Barisan Jemaah Islamia Se-Malaysia, or Berjasa, Parti Hizbul Muslimin Malaysia, Hamim, and Congress India Muslim Malaysia, KIMMA, in 1990. Yeah? Kima left the coalition in 1995, and it was formally disbanded after the 1995 election, or the Tan Malaysian General Election. So it's a short period of 
time on the R4 APU. Okay, secondly, gagasan rakyat. It was the political coalition uh, formed by DAP, Parti Bersatu Sabah, PBS, Parti Rakyat Malaysia, PRM, Barisan Progressive India, IPF, and Parti Solidarity Malaysia, MSP in 1990. It were also joined by three other members from Angkatan Kepaduan Ummah ya. On the 25th of January 1995, Dap withdrawn from the coalition. Third one, Barisan Alternative or BA. It was a grand coalition of Malaysian opposition parties formed as a counterweight to the ruling Barisan Nasional in 1999. The four largest opposition parties Pas, DAP, Keadilan, and PRM announced an electoral alliance and issued a joint manifesto. Although never formally registered, it was the first opposition coalition that strongly challenged Barisan National's hegemony. Disbanded after the 2004 general elections, Barisan Alternative has formed a new coalition called Pakatan Rakyat or PR, following the 2008 general elections. Next one is Pakatan Rakyat. Political coalition formed by the PRK, Keadilan, ya, DAP and PAS in 2008. In April 2010, the Sarawak National Party, also called SNAP, officially joined as a member of the Pakatan Rakyat after being expelled from Barisan National but quit the coalition in May 2011. The DAP declared the coalition that in June 2015, citing the inability of the rest of the alliance to work with PAS after PAS Congress passed the motion to sever, to sever ties with that without debate. It was succeeded by Pakatan Harapan. So Pakatan Rakyat is actually, um, Pakatan Harapan is actually a replacement of Pakatan Rakyat, yeah? Okay, factors contributed to the establishment of Pakatan Harapan as a new opposition coalition replacing Pakatan Rakyat. The first one, relationship between PAS and DAP in PR was beyond repair. Second, withdrawal of PAS from PR due to several issues with DAP, especially on PAS Islamist agenda and hudud. Thirdly, the failure of the opposition party to form solid coalition starting from Baris and Alternative and Pakatan Rakyat. Fourthly, ensuring that the split in Pakatan Rakyat will never be repeated. And Last but not least, preparation for the 14th Malaysian general election in 2018, yeah, which they won, yeah, and it, it has been a victory for Pakatan Harapan in general election 2018. And then, reasons for Barisan National lost in general election 14. The first one, of course, this one is uh, the most popular uh, assumption, which is Najib's weak administration of scandal. It involves one MDB, SRC, and also GST. Yeah. Strong opposition coalition from Pakatan Harapan, in which Pakatan Harapan replaced Pakatan Rakyat. Thirdly, the return of Olgar. Uh, this one also is very common and uh, common assumption, a very popular one. Tun Dr. Mahade, Tun Da Inzainuddin, and Tan Sri Rafidah Aziz. Yeah. And then fourthly, Leadership of Tun Dr. Mahade, uniting Pakatan Harapan using one logo in election, leading and strategizing the Pakatan approach. And then fifthly, Malay tsunami, especially in Amno's stronghold. Um, Amno, Amno itself has an internal issue, yeah, so this is one of the important reasons also for the MLs in general election because they are not strong enough inside. There are a lot of issues, internal issues, yeah. And then, um, number six, deficit in fixed deposit, especially in Sarawak, Sabah, and Johor. All right, now we are going to look at each political party in Malaysia. These are the most popular one, yeah. Okay, PAS, Barisan National, Democratic Action Party, PKR, PPBM, Amanah, Warisan and also Pakatan Harapan. Okay, the first one, PAS. PAS is also known as Party Islam, so Malaysia or Malaysian Islamic Party. Okay, an ideological party that aims at creating an Islamic state. 
established by Ahmad Fuad Hassan and Malayan ulama clerics within UMNO in 1951, PAS advocates the implementation of Islam as a comprehensive way of life. Okay, there are two main objectives of PAS. I think it's only two, yeah? Okay, so the first objective is to struggle for the establishment of a society and government in this country that embodies and manifests Islamic values and issues that seek the pleasure of the Almighty. Second objective, to uphold the sovereignty of the country and the security of the religion of Islam. So everything is about the religion of Islam, yeah? that its Islamic character began to clearly manifest in 1982 when the party leadership was replaced by the ulama or clerics headed by Yusuf Rawa, Fadzil Noor, Nick Aziz, the most popular one, and Abdul Hadi Awang. In 1990, PAS embarked of Hudud as the main struggle in politics. Its major support base are located in the pre modernly Malay states of Kelantan, Terengganu, Kedah, and since its establishment, PAS managed to rule some states government in Kelantan uh, from 1959 to 1977 and from 1990 until now, in Terengganu from 1959 until 1962 and from 1999 until 2004 in Kedah from 2008 until 2013 and form a coalition government in Perak from 2008-2009 and Selangor from 2008-2018. to 2018. Currently, it rules Kelantan and Terengganu state governments after general election 14. Next one, DAP or Democratic Action Party. An ideological base or non-communal party but its support base is mainly from the Chinese community. Remember, yeah, that, the rocket, okay, has its origin from the People's Action Party or PAP of Singapore in 1965. Established by Deva Nair and Zen Manhin and former members of the deregistered PAP of Malaysia. So the root party is actually from Singapore, yeah. Although DAP has distanced itself from PAP, its main objective is not dissimilar to PAP's aim of achieving a Malaysian Malaysia. DAP's leadership consists of professionals, trade unionists, and educationists. Major strength of DAP is in the Chinese-dominated areas Penang, the Kinta Valley in Ipoh, the Klang Valley in Kuala Lumpur, and Selangor and major cities in Sabah and Sarawak. DAP has ruled Penang state government since 2008 until now with its coalition with, within Pakatan Harapan. And then Barisan National, National Front or Barisan National, the Anya. It was established in 1974 as a broad-based political coalition from its predecessor, Parti Perikatan or Alliance Party. Made up of the former Alliance members and some former opposition parties from Gerakan, People's Progressive Party, PPP, and also PAS. Reasons, uh, reasons of uh, the establishment, the first one, to lessen politicking among ethnic groups by widening a coalition, and secondly, to pave the way to solve ethnic disparities in the 13 May tragedy. Still remember 13 May tragedy? Okay. Although PAS were expelled from Barisan National in 1977, Barisan National emerged as the supreme and dominated Malaysian politics since independence. In the aftermath of the 2018 general election, Barisan National lost its hall of the parliament to Pakatan Harapan for the first time in Malaysian history. It was also the first time Barisan National became the opposition coalition after almost taken together with its predecessor alliance 61 years in power. Po BN political dominance factors contributed to the dominance of Barisan National as a ruling party in Malaysia. There are four factors, yeah? Firstly, the ability of Barisan National to mobilize the ethnic voters through its composition of 13 political parties. Secondly, effective power sharing practice and operational inter-elite bargaining. Thirdly, 
Barca National History of Good Governance and Proven Track Record, and fourthly, strong control and monopoly of mainstream media enables Barca National to campaign effectively and back out opposition news. Okay, number five, advantage of rural wage benefited from the electoral system. Number six, manipulation of electoral role through delineation and practice of gerrymandering that always favors Barca National. Okay, I have asked you to do a task on gerrymandering topics, so I assume that all of you already know clearly what is gerrymandering in uh, Malaysian politics, yeah? Especially in electoral role. Number seven, effective practice of patronage towards voters. So all the so um all the voters are being patronage, yeah? And then number eight, usage of 3M, money, media, and also missionary. Next one, PKR. Centrist Progressivism Political Party or Party Keadilan Rakyat. A centrist multiracial political party with a non-ethnic approach through a strong emphasis on social justice and also anti-corruption. Established in 2003, Three, by a merger of the All Party Keadilan National of Keadilan and Party Rakyat Malaysia PRM. However, it was rooted back in 1999 during reformacy era when the DPM or Deputy Prime Minister Datuk Seri Anwar Ibrahim was second in 1998. Party Keadilan National was established then by supporters of Anwar and led by his wife Dr. Wan Aziza Wan Ismail. Although PKR is a non-communal party, but its support base is among the Malay electorate, urban voters, and younger electorate. Its members comprise former AMNO, members who left the party in protest against the treatment to Anwar, former ABIM leaders, and leaders or members of NGOs sympathize to Anwar. PKR has ruled Selangor from 2008. Uh, until now, yeah. And the Greece Milan in 2018 state government with its coalition in Pakatan Harapan. Okay, next one. This is a very popular one as well. The recent PPBM or Parti Peribumi Bersatu Malaysia or Bersatu, also called Malaysian United Indigenous Party. The party was founded by Tun Dr. Mahade Mohammad as chairman and Muhyiddin Yassin as the president. It is considered a Malay nationalist or Malay supremacist party. Most of the members are formally joined AMNO, born as a result of AMNO internal political disputes. Bersatu joined Pakatan Harapan coalition and won the 14th general election. Bersatu left Pakatan Harapan and joined the coalition Perikatan Nasional in 2020. And then Amana, Parti Amana Negara or the Islamic Modernism Party, National Trust Party. The party was founded as the Malaysia Workers Party before being handed over in August 2015 to a group of progressive Islamists who were leaders of the past which had lost in 2015 past party election. This group of Islamists then redefined the Malaysia Workers Party as an Islamic party on 16 September 2015. It is one of the four component parties of the opposition coalition in Malaysia called the Pakatan Harapan. It was led by uh, Ahmad, uh, Muhammad Sabu. Yeah? Alright, number seven, Warisan or Party Warisan Sabah or also known as Sabahan Regionalism Party. Okay. A regional Sabah-based party in Malaysia. The party was formed in October 2016, founded by Daryl Leeking and Datuk Seri Shafi Abdal. The party was formerly named as Parti Pembangunan Warisan Sabah, or known also as Sabah Heritage Development Party. The party became part of the government coalition when Pakatan Harapan won the 2018 general election. But Warisan is only an electoral pact with Pakatan Harapan, not part of the Pakatan Harapan pact as Warisan will only contest in Sabah. Originally from Sabah, yeah. And then number eight, Pakatan Harapan Coalition. Founded in 2015, 
as a coalition consisting the DAP, PKR Amana and also PPBM and Warisan in Sabah. Ya. It is the second largest coalition in the Parliament of Malaysia led by Dr. Wan Azizah. The movement has aimed to form a broad alliance of centre-left parties for the general election due to be held in 2018. Pas were out from this coalition and formed Gagasan Sejahtera with Parti Ikatan Bangsa Malaysia Ikatan, Barisan Jemaah Islamiyah Malaysia Berjasa, and Parti Harapan Malaysia PHM. Bersatu has also left the coalition. Yeah? Okay, now we move on to the next topic, 5.3, which is the election system in Malaysia. I think we have been discussed and mentioned about this in previous topic, but never mind. We just uh, take a look at it. Okay. It was held every five years. The purpose is to elect representatives in the state legislative assembly to lead the state government and representatives of the House of Representatives to form the federal government. Assigned to the Election Commission, EC, as stated in Article 113 to 120 of the Federal Constitution. There are two types of election in Malaysia, general election and or by election. Yeah? Election can be done after the legislative is dissolved by Yang Dipertuan Agong for federal and sultan or state governors for state through prime minister or tribesa advice. Need to be held within 60 days for Peninsula and 90 days for Sabah and Sarawak. Elections Commission, SPR. The federal constitution creates the institution of the Elections Commission, SPR, which is tasked to, there are three tasks here, the first one, carry out election to the Dewan Rakyat as well as the legislative assemblies of the various states throughout the federation. Secondly, prepare and review the electoral roll for the elections. Thirdly, come up with proposals relating to the delimitation exercise. And then next, delimitation of election constituencies, delimitation or delineation. The act or process of fixing limits or boundaries of territorial constituencies in a country or a province having a legislative body. Delineation is one of the responsibilities mandated upon the Commission or SPR. Yeah? The SPR is tasked to come up with proposals relating to the delimitation exercise. And then the principles of delimitation of constituencies. The 13th schedule of the federal constitution lays down the principles that must be taken into account in this process. Constituencies ought to be delimited so that they do not cross state boundaries and regard ought to be had to the inconvenience of state constituencies crossing the boundaries of federal constituencies. The administrative facilities available within the constituencies for the establishment of the necessary registration and polling machines. The number of electors within each constituency in a state ought to be approximately equal. However, regard must also be given to the disadvantages that rural constituencies face, so a measure of weightage for area ought to be given to these rural constituencies. The principle of maintenance of local ties, namely hara hubungan, tempatannya. Then, the electoral review for the delimitation of the federation and the status constituencies can be initiated based on the following circumstances. First one, not less than eight years from the date of completion of the previous review or second one, there are amendments to the law that are amended by the federal constitution or the state law, whether to increase or decrease the number of council seats or the creation of new territories such as the formation of the federal territories of Kuala Lumpur, Labuan, and Putrajaya. Next one, the procedures of delimitation of constituencies. After the review is conducted and the proposals drafted, the Commission must issue a notice in the Government Gazette 
and local newspapers on the proposals and display the proposals at public places to be viewed by the public. Within one month from the date of the notice, any party that wished to object to the proposals may submit it to the Commission. If there are objections from any state government, local government or any group of 100 registered voters in any constituency who are affected by the proposal, then the Commission must conduct a local inquiry for those constituencies. In the local inquiry, representation may be made by the objectors as to why the objections are lodged. The Commission may either accept the representations made at the inquiries or reject them. If the Commission made changes to the proposal, a fresh notice must be issued. After that, a report will be prepared and given to the Prime Minister showing the details of the proposals. The Prime Minister will then table the report to the Dewan Rakyat along with a draft order on the proposals. Yeah? If proposals are rejected by the Dewan Rakyat or withdrawn with leave of the Dewan and the Prime Minister after consulting with the Commission may amend the draft and table the proposals to the Dewan Rakyat again. If the majority of the members of the Dewan Rakyat approve the draft, it will then be presented to the Yang Diputuan Agong who will then make the order in ter terms of the draft order. The order will then come into force at the date specified. Alright, the last topic for today, 5.4, the future of Malaysian political culture and landscape. Okay, voting behavior. This is a very important part as well yeah, in this topic. Voting behavior, it refers to how people vote in an election, uh, how they make their choice of a candidate or party or how they decide who to vote for. Yeah? In other words, what factors do they consider as important before they cast the ballot? Put simply, it means how or on what basis the voters make their decisions. So political scientists always do this, yeah? They keep on doing the uh, voting behavior and assumption based on the general election that will come here. Yeah? Several basic factors can be identified as reasons for choosing a candidate or party in a general election. A voter may choose a candidate on the basis of one or more of the following considerations. The first one, party identification. It also known as a party affiliation, partisanship, or party loyalty. Some voters identify with one of the major parties and the party ties or loyalty influence to vote. The major influence on party affiliation or party attachment comes from the family, teachers, and peers. Of course, yeah? Okay, let's say your parents is in Warisan. So, of course, you are going to follow your parents. This is a very strong influence, yeah? family influence. Okay. In the example, parent loyal to Amno, chances are that son will be one too. Okay. So, this is based on party, a party identification. And then, second one, candidate. Voters also judge candidates by their personal characteristics. They are likely to vote for candidates they perceive as capable of being effective leaders. Personal characteristics, traits, or qualities includes personal life, the way candidates lead their personal life, character, personal appeal and appearance, competency leadership, ability, experience, knowledge, honesty, integrity, morality, trustworthiness, and empathy. Caring about people usually will attract people towards the candidate here. Yeah? Okay, so um, this one is also like a common sense. Okay, if you like somebody else's characteristics, surely you will adore that person, right? Okay, uh, more than anything else. Okay, for example, I adore, for example, I adore a, a politician in my area. Okay, it's from the opposition actually, but then the characteristic is very attractive. Of course, I will tend to vote the candidate itself. So. This is from within, yeah. So candidate is uh, actually an internal factor, yeah. Okay. So it is based on psychological factor, actually psychological trait. Third one, general assessment. Voters rely on general evaluations of the government or the party in power, performance, manifesto, and also campaign. A retrospective past evaluation of government performance 
is an important more immediate or short-term determinant of voting behavior. For example, a lot of people uh, assume that Barisan National, uh, because the Barisan National can lead uh, the country very well because of the general assessment factor. That is why it can remain in power for 61 years. Am I right? So this is based on general assessment, yeah? How well the government has done, how well its predetermined objectives has been, have been achieved, what the government should do or should not do, has the national economy and national security improved? These are questions that the voters will evaluate before they make a decision and before they go into the polls, okay? So this is basically based on reputation of the party itself, general assessment, yeah? And then issues. Many voters say they vote only on policy issues, short-term consideration. This means that they choose based on the stand on questions of great importance to them. These issues include economic performance, welfare benefits, election manifesto, gender, race, religion, age or social class. So um, this is basically um, apply, apply, yeah? applies. Uh, to the person that can think very well of uh, issues uh, issues that is currently occurring in a country. So if you are a thinker, you keep on observing, uh, you can, uh, you can um, take this, this kind of trait or this kind of factor as uh, one of the factors that um, influence the voting behavior of or yourself. Okay? So issues. Which one are you? Issues. Uh, general assessment, um, candidate or party identification, you can ask yourself, yeah? The pot dada and the samera. Okay, Malaysian political culture. We have six here. The first one is feudal. The attitude of loyalty and subconscious compliance to the upper class is said to have been in the Malaysian political culture since long ago. Parochial. The people have no understanding of the national political system, do not possess any tendency to participate in the input processes, and have no consciousness of the output processes. So they have limited awareness there. Yeah. This is uh, under the parochial category. And then number three, conservative. Tend to preserve a tradition of hereditary practices. A conservative mind likes to make a practice unchanged and resist change, oppose reformation. Yeah. And then number four, submissive, inclined or ready to submit, unresistingly or humbly obedient to the authorities that may exert a dominance of their conscience designed strictly for the gain. And then number five, passive, tend to be a political subject, passive in active citizens rather than active, participatory in political affairs of the country. Yeah? And then number six, undivided loyalty. Obedient, indifferent, discouraged, questioning, afraid for opposition or criticism, and just following the wishes of the communion, it is implicit in the context of the relationship between the leader and subordinates. Yeah? Okay, we have come to an end of the topic. So thank you for your attention, as usual. Please take care and always stay safe here. Yeah? Class, okay.